What is going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another video. My name is Adam, your host of Adam Finance. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a pretty highly requested video on this channel. It is, what was your area manager project for the summer of your internship? So, if you guys are interested in that, stay tuned. Before I go on, if you guys enjoy this kind of content, uh, let me know down in the comments if you like it. If you don't like it, also let me know down there. If you guys enjoyed it, smash the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And with that, let's get on to the video. At the beginning of your internship at Amazon, you're going to be assigned a project of something for you to work on for the entire uh, duration of your 10 to 12 week internship. For my project, I was assigned with the task of increasing the units per hour and the units per face of the employees who were stowing their items. Basically, I was given free reign, uh, free reign, free range, however you want to say it, uh, to do whatever I needed to do in order to get those improvements that were requested of me. Success with these projects is non-linear, meaning you're not just gonna have one idea and that's gonna be the perfect idea. You're gonna have a couple ideas, you're gonna wanna try it, um, and that's one of the big things about working at Amazon. It's such a huge company, they give you the free range of motion to do whatever you want there, try however you want, because they're really not a small company. They're not uh, constricted on money, constricted on employees, so you're really able to try it on um, whoever you want and really test out your ideas. So I can't show you guys my actual document because it's an Amazon confidential document. However, I can give you an example of what I was tasked to do with. At about two to three weeks into my internship, my uh, senior manager gave me a paper that basically said, here are all of the numbers that we have laid out for you. You got your units per face, units per hour, uh, your tack times, all of this kind of stuff just laid out in a big Excel sheet. We want you to figure out how we can get from X number, let's say 100, to about 115 to 120 units per hour. Those aren't the exact numbers because I can't really display that for you guys. It's an Amazon confidential document. But let's just say it was 100 to wanting to increase to 115 to 120 plus per hour. While analyzing this data, there are so many different numbers to take into consideration. And there's a lot of different factors that go into this as well. Do you stow a couple items in the top two bins? Do you stow them in the top, the lower two bins? If you stow more items up top and more items below versus stowing them in the middle, you're actually going to improve the speed of your stow rate. So that's a very complex equation that honestly I was not given. I was just told that, okay, if you stow more here, stow more down here than the middle, it's going to go up. Another big factor that I was looking for was how many units per face, so how many items per container are they stowing? Uh, when I say they, the associates that work at Amazon who I'm supervising. The units per face, UPF, UPF, I don't know which way it's gonna be coming up, but that's basically how many units per face you're putting into the item, and that's a very important number that you wanna be looking at. Along with your UPF, you wanna focus on your no stow turnaway. Basically, NSTA, no stow turnaway, means when that pod comes to you and you look at it, if it's completely full, you just send it away. You hit the button, send it away. You're not stowing a single item, aka no stow turnaway. UPF and no stow turn away and STA heavily relate to each other because you want to always have a high UPF but a super low NSTA. Throughout the about like seven to eight weeks that I had with this project, I was able to survey about 20 associates that were of the 50 who were stowing. So I basically, the Amazon warehouse is basically in a huge, uh, a huge square. Um, I, was, I took them to one side of the department versus being over here, took them over here. And I basically told them, okay, I need you guys to get to this X number by doing exactly what I'm about to show you. In order to make it easy on them, I basically made a PowerPoint presentation of what I want them to do, how I want them to do it exactly. And if this was able to work, I would be able to go into the Amazon uh, database and see, okay, I can download this old Excel sheet and the new Excel sheet and compare where they were versus to where they are now. So with those associates who uh, I studied with, they basically did this for about a week and a half to two weeks. And then once I saw the improvements were actually way higher than what was requested, like I said, if they were requested to be 115 to 120 UPH units per hour, they were actually now hitting about 160 to 170 units per hour. Even though they were hitting such high units per hour, I still had to factor in the, into consideration that they were stowing very small items versus very big items. So for example, if you wanna stow an item such as like a pen, uh, that's super easy to put into a 4x4 container, you just drop it in and it's perfect. However, if you want to stow a huge computer or like a mini fridge or something like that, you're not going to be able to fit it into many pods that come your way. So that obviously affects your units per face and affects your no stow turn away. 
After about six to seven weeks of trial and error with this process, I was able to get a document down that basically states exactly what needs to happen in a, in a PowerPoint presentation so that associates could be scanned in on their badge to show that, okay, they went through this training, so why are they studying at such a slow rate? And then we can, we can pull back and figure out what exactly is going on with this one associate. Are they getting all big items? Are they getting all medium items, small items? Or is someone else getting super little items? So we need to really figure out exactly how to do that in order to evenly disperse it so that not one person is getting all small, one person is getting all big. This system is going to be implemented by Amazon for the next couple of months. It's going to be studied and see if it actually is causing a drastic improvement or if it's just keeping things the same. Uh, when I was there at Amazon, I was able to help them about about a 40 to 45 UPH. In terms of cost estimation, that's about $600,000 of revenue. So it just shows that even an extra 40 to 45 UPH um, units per hour, that's saving about $650,000 of revenue or increasing revenue, however you want to look at it, it is saving a ton of money. I think that the major reason why I got a return offer from Amazon was because of this project and because I was able to make such a drastic improvement in their system. Amazon wants someone who's going to try the idea that's outside of the box, who's going to really put their foot forward and really want to do something that others might be unwilling to try. So that's what I did. It was showed very good improvement, um, and in the end, I was able to get that full-time offer. Yep, that's my uh, that's my project basically in a nutshell. I'm sorry I can't share that with you guys. I was going to, but then I realized it does say Amazon Confidential on it. Uh, those numbers are really related to what Amazon's doing. It does have private information on it, such as employee login information. Um, so I can't really share that with you guys. However, that is my project, basically increasing that UPH, which in turn saves a lot of money. If you guys have any more questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below. I love answering those questions. Um, and if you guys have anything else, uh, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.